Mark here, and today we're going to look at some accessories for the M1 by Xtool. Uh, one of the accessories is the Air Assist we'll be doing today, as well as the riser base uh, with honeycomb panels. Uh, if you haven't seen the video on the uh, fire safety set, uh, I have done uh, actually a couple videos on that. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description for you, and you can check that out and see how that works. Uh, so we'll start off by unboxing. We'll work with the Air Assist first, uh, and then we will do the honeycomb base. Uh, so there are chapters in the bottom of this video. You can scroll along uh, and jump to the section that you want to see. Uh, well, let's get started. Looks like I have a little helper here. Are you going to polish up the side of the M1, are you, Lucifer? Yeah, oh, you're just going to lie right there. <laughs> okay, well, let's see how this goes. We may have to move him. <laughs> going to help us out with this, eh? <laughs> All right, so uh, upon opening it, of course, you get your manual. Uh, you do get a little decal in here uh, reminding, there goes Lucifer, <laughs> reminding you to remove the cutting tool. So whenever you're reaching under to connect or disconnect the air assist, uh, you wanna make sure you're not gonna cut yourself. It's also a good idea to remove that uh, during the installation. Uh, so all the information is here for the installation. Uh, and we have our first layer here. Uh, and then we have the pump and cord right here. Uh, so there's a controller in here as well. Uh, there is a filter uh, on the bottom here. They do give you, I think they give you one, possibly two. Yes, they do give you two filters in here. Um, so we're going to set that aside uh, and then we have our little box here of accessories. So uh, with the accessories, if I can figure out how to open it, it's this end here. Uh, we have the air hose. That's it. We have the air hose here and there is markings on it. Uh, so we're going to get to these markings in a little bit. Um, I'll set that aside. Uh, so we've got our two filters in here for replacement. Uh, we have two uh, air nozzles. So these are magnetic nozzles. Uh, we have two of the, uh, uh, the magnetic adapters to go with that. These mount to the machine. Uh, and then we have um, in here, we've got a tube and a quick connect, and that's gonna hook up uh, our hose at the end. Uh, and then we have in here, we have our tweezers. We're gonna need those for the installation. Uh, we have a little screwdriver as well. They give you all those, those um, pieces and extra parts as well. So uh, here's some O-rings. Uh, and then we have our, um, all of our, um, guides, I guess, uh, you can say. So the first thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to clean these edges here with isopropyl alcohol uh, just to make sure that we get a good uh, secure mount uh, and they're not going to fall off. Uh, they're going to tell us to flip the machine over. So um, what we'll do here is we want to make sure that the uh, the laser head is in the back corner. Uh, and when we close it, we're going to flip it in that direction because we don't want the laser head to slide and slam into uh, the far side. So we'll gently flip it over. And there we have it. Okay, so now we can freely move this over. Now I've already removed my cutting tool. Uh, so if your cutting tool is still in there, you wanna make sure that that is removed, uh, just so you don't uh, cut yourself. There are two screws in here uh, that remove this plate. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove those two screws. Now you're not gonna need this um, after we remove it. So just set it aside somewhere, uh, maybe set it aside in the box that the air assist came from, just so that all of your parts are together. And for whatever reason down the road, uh, maybe you decide uh, to buy the S1. Um, and 
you're not using this as a laser engraver anymore. Uh, you are gonna use it as a cutting tool and maybe you don't need the air assist anymore. So we're gonna take our tweezers here and there are two holes on this collar. And you wanna just put the tips in and slide it or spin it. Uh, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So just like a normal screw and that will come out. So the lens is right in here. So you wanna make sure that that doesn't fall out. You're not flipping the machine over while it's in this state. Uh, again, we're gonna put that collar away for, um, for a rainy day, I guess we'll call it. So now that we have the collar out, uh, we want to grab our uh, adapter, our magnetic adapter. There is a lens in there, so just be careful not to drop anything on there to damage it or to flip the machine over. Uh, so we'll now take this collar and we will thread it on. Just make sure that it is threading on easily because you don't want to cross thread it. Uh, and turn it so it is parallel. To the back here. Is it going to go? No, it's not going to go the next turn. So we will back it off here. There is some play in here, but uh, it's not going to go. It's not going to go any further than that to another half turn. Uh, so we will have to leave it in this position. Okay, we're going to stop the video right here because there is something important missing out of the instructions. Now, you should have a little case like this, and this case is gonna have uh, two little baggies in it uh, with lenses, and it will also have gaskets. So you can see there is one gasket in there. Now, when you take the adapter, before you screw the adapter in, you need to take one of those gaskets and put it over top of the threaded side, make sure it's flush, and then screw it on. Um, I've seen a number of videos with this particular instance and they don't say anything about the gasket. So is anybody actually using the gasket? Uh, we have those two gaskets. Uh, I checked them out. They do fit. They fit perfectly. I went and reinstalled that piece and it is now fairly snug. Something that can happen if the gasket isn't in or if that lens is crooked because it's not put in properly is you can have issues right after uh, when you do your first cut. Uh, you may have an issue cutting three millimeter bass where it would. Um, that's three millimeters a second, 100 power. If you can't cut out that but you were able to before, then shut it down, check that, make sure that lens is in properly because if that lens is crooked at any point, uh, it'll create some diffraction of the laser and you'll run into all kinds of problems. Hope that helps. Let's get back to the video. Now at this point, we can go ahead and we can flip the machine back over. Uh, but again, just make sure that your head is over in the far position so that when you do turn it, it's not gonna slam and move uh, erratically. Uh, so we will now take uh, our mounts here, our guides. So the first one is going to go right over into the corner. You want to make sure it's below this line here. And that it's nice and level. And that the hose is going to fit in here and turn the corner. Uh, and it will then uh, go into this next one. We then want to take our smaller one. I want to slide that in over on this side. They say 30 to 40 millimeters, um, but in this corner it may be a little too far out. Um, so you want to get a little bit tighter into the corner, uh, and then that one is now secure. So the last one we're going to do is we're going to do this one. I'm going to make a nice use of these tweezers they gave me. <laughs> and of course that's not going to come off as easily. And the last one is, make sure it's upright, uh, is going to go over here on this side. Now these ones here, uh, actually some people have installed this 
um, they've said, well, they give you extra ones. Uh, you know, you don't need these ones because these are the ones that goes in and then it goes to the head. Uh, but these two are important for storing your hose uh, and the uh, nozzle attachment, uh, which we'll get into uh, in a little bit. So now that those are on, we want to install the guide. And on the unit, down here there's a couple holes and there are a couple pegs on the back of this. Uh, so that's going to tell you how it is going to be installed onto the side of it. Just like that. So now it's time for the installation of the hose. Uh, you want to start with the end with the tape on it and that's where you're going to put your nozzle and it's just a quick connect it pushes on like that it's secure if you want to remove it you pull back on the collar and it'll release it but it's just a, a quick connect nice and easy uh, so what we're going to do here is um, a good idea is to stretch this out you can see how coiled it is uh, so you want to make sure that you take that coil memory out of it by stretching it out and getting as much of that coil out. So that's just going to cause some problems a little later uh, once we go to install it. Okay, so with that magnetically attached, uh, you want to bring this up and tuck it into our guide here. And you can see here this tape should be sitting right at the top. Uh, and then from there, we want to fish this over. Now this is where it can cause some problems uh, and where you want it to sit. So ideally, you want the hose to do something like this so that it, when it comes back, it tucks in and clears. You don't want it installed like this, because that's going to cause binding there. So just pay attention to what the hose wants to do uh, and um, install it in such a way. You may have to make some adjustments, of course, um, but tuck that in like that. You might need something to push it down with, and I think um, the back side of these will work just fine. So that just pops in there. And then comes around the corner, and if you've put this in with enough of a gap in here, uh, it should go in without a problem. Uh, and then this can then just tuck back into the machine, uh, which will go through the hole in the base, the honeycomb base, uh, or it will just pass through underneath if you don't have uh, if you don't have the base. So here we can see that this is an issue. So we will have to make some adjustments. Um, I don't like that because it's hitting the top here. It will work, it will clear. You want to make sure you move the head around manually and it's not going to bind on anything. Okay, so that's its furthest point. It still has some slack. I'm going to move the head over to the far side over here. And again, there's still slack. So uh, we're going to be, let's say we're going to be using the cutting tool and we want to remove this. So we're going to pull that off and just pop off the magnetic piece on the bottom. Uh, and then from here, again, we want to tuck this in here. Let's say we're not going to be using this anymore for a while. Uh, so put it away so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, maybe if you're doing mugs, um, or you're, you know, you're doing some metal items, you're not doing wood, you're not worried about scorching, then this will, um, this will work as well. You can kind of tuck it away. And this is the adapter here. So there's your 3M. Uh, so what I would do here is I would peel off the backing. So we're going to mount this in this direction here. Actually, no, in this direction here. Sorry. <laughs> Um, and the nozzle is going to slide into here, like so, okay? So now we're in the position, so now what we want to do is we want to mount it. Uh, push it back a little bit, make sure it's not 
too taut that it's, you're going to be able to put it in nice and easily and then push it into place. So those are all now secure. So now you're completely secure your hoses out of the way. When you do need to use, you can then pull this back up and you can magnetically mount it to the bottom here. Okay, we have the pump and as I mentioned before, uh, your filter is down here on the bottom. Uh, there's a clip on both sides that you just pop off and you can replace that. Uh, here's the controller for it, your high and low. Uh, a lot of people I've uh, run across have just ran this on high. I suppose if you're doing something where it's starting to blow away your project, uh, you're going to want to turn that down. Now uh, we have a hose here, it's just a silicone hose and this is just going to slide right over top of that nozzle. Uh, and then we have our another quick connect here. It's going to slide into that. And then the end of our hose uh, is again just going to slide right into that. Uh, give it a little tug, make sure it's on there secure, which it is. Uh, again, this is a quick connect collar, so you want to push back or pull back on that blue collar and then at the same time pull the hose. So you've got that kind of an action going on. Okay, so time for the honeycomb base uh, riser for the M1. Uh, so here is your uh, manual on uh, how to install it. Uh, they do give you a measuring tool, which it looks like they uh, used a laser engraver to make it. Uh, so this is to get your height uh, and to measure it up. So we'll set that aside and we'll get right in here to the base itself. Great packaging. Got these little corner blocks and everything in here, so that's good. Uh, so this is your base, and it looks like they've got the magnets that it comes with uh, attached to it. So there you go. So these are your, we'll call them hold down tools, uh, and they are magnetic uh, tabs that go in and can hold you. So you get four of those with it. So put that aside. We're not going to need that right away. We will get into the chassis. So here is the one. And it looks like, again, um, this is black acrylic. So it looks like this has been laser engraved. So uh, I guess you can make your own parts if you uh, have a laser engraving company. Uh, so there's one of those and a second one of these here. So these are going to be the front and back panels. Uh, and these here are going to be the side panels. There we go. Okay, so we've got our two side pieces here. Uh, you can tell that they're upright because the screws in here are all pointing in the same direction. So if you have it pointing in an opposite direction, uh, just make sure you spin it over. On the front of the machine, which will be your side of the machine, you will see labeling on this one side rail. Uh, so that just sits down like that. There's no real installation because it doesn't screw in together. The M1 laser will sit on top of it in these holes and they'll secure it in place. So these, I believe these holes go in the down position um, just from the photo in the uh, instructions. And the other one uh, slides in the front. That's it, done. <laughs> nice and easy. Uh, the hardest part is probably getting it uh, to go in to, uh, to, to get this machine on top of it, lining it up. Uh, so we're going to try to do this. We will lift this up, put it on a slight angle. Get rid of the manual. We don't need that anymore. So we're going to take our hose and we're going to slide it through uh, here. So we're going to go in from the bottom. Fish it out. Of course, making sure that coil is not tangled up. Uh, and then, of course, this is where the pump will then hook on to, of course, on the end uh, at your setup. Now, at this point, you can take the, uh, the machine and slide it over, or lift it over, I should say. On top like this, you can see it's not in. 
So we just want to make sure that we go around to each side and make sure it is flush to the bottom. Okay, so here we go, finished product. Uh, that just lifts off and exposes our rails here. So depending on the height of materials you're using, if you're making, uh, using the rotary tool, maybe you might want it down a little farther. Uh, this will then go right back in to seal that up so that you get a good, um, a, a, a good negative air from exhaust ventilation. Without this on, you might get some smoke uh, coming out and around. Uh, now, if you are cutting something like this or basswood, some, some thinner wood, uh, you want to take this out and you'll want to install that uh, through the top of the machine because the clearance here isn't enough. Uh, so this top of this plate needs to be right up at the top of the machine where the original base plate was removed from and it just doesn't fit this way. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to install it overhead and tuck it down into the rails as such. So that's it, nice and easy. Um, if you have any comments or questions about uh, this process, please leave them down below in the comment section. Take care, have a wonderful day, and happy engraving.